Fires, start your engines! Tuning up your work week. It's MRN Motorsports Monday, presented by Outback Steakhouse and brought to you by Hercules Tires and Grunt Style Apparel. Now, please welcome your show host. One's a spotting and one's a grinning. Here's Woody Kane and Joey Meyer. You gonna spot today or are you gonna grin today? Uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> pick it and grinning. Pick it and grinning. Here we you are. Bring a little ukulele in here one time and do that. I'm Woody Kane. He's Joey Meyer talking about the week that was on the NASCAR circuit out at Watkins Glen International and the coming week headed to Michigan International Speedway where the trucks will be back in action. But the big story, of course, Chase Elliott gets his first victory. Only took him 99 tries. He had been second. Eight, eight times, times before getting that victory. Eight yeah. times. Those guys have had breathtaking victories snatched from their jaws. Many, many races where Chase is leading to the end of the race and has some kind of snafu, something going on, and just can't bring the victory home. But those guys have been on the on the cusp of a victory, and they were able to bring it home. And what this a time great, the other guys had the issues. But what a great facility. In other words, there wasn't any luck. We can talk about Kyle Busch's incident. He got back to third, who had a fast car as well. But him and Kyle had a really good race. Uh, all afternoon, but to be able to go around Watkins Glen at the level of competition, being chased down by a previous winner, cup champion. He was going for his third straight road win was Martin Truex Jr. Yep. You got your dad spotting for you over in the How chicane. How cool is that? Well, is it a chicane, a bus stop, or an interloop? I, I, I don't yeah, think it matters. <laughs> right. it, it's okay. We know what yeah. you mean. Um, it's just, you know, Eddie DeHunt and Chase Elliott and Alan Gustafson, who's his birthday, 43rd birthday. What a great birthday present. Yeah. But really just to break the, break the ice, break the seal on that, um, don't be surprised. You know, we sat right here and said the Chevrolets were off earlier in the year, mm -hmm. like we saw Toyotas a, a little while ago. But now here we are through the stretch of the summer. The Toyotas uh, are okay. The Fords are okay. But the Chevrolets are starting to come on. We've seen speed out of the Hendrick camp here recently. Larson's been fast in the Chevrolets, but they were able to break that ice and get to victory lane. It was a really, really good deal. Here's what Chase Elliott thought after the victory at Watkins Glen. You know, a lot of relief, a lot of emotion in general, but, you know, definitely a relief, I would say, would be one one way to, to describe it. It's been, uh, you know, I've left these races pretty down, you know, over the past couple of years at times and had some great opportunities. And I think that, uh, you know, you just have to realize, and you know, we run second eight times or whatever it was, and, um, I think kind of one thing I tried to beat in my head was that you weren't you don't run second eight times by luck and take it for what it is but that's just the truth you just don't um, so you have to realize that you were in those positions for a reason a and B if you're in them at one point in time you can get back to them and uh, learn from whatever it was that prevented you from ultimately getting a win and try to correct it to, to do so and uh, learned a lot about myself the past couple of years I've learned a lot racing in general but like um, you know, I felt like then last year I was probably uh, at the top of my game I, that I've ever been racing as a race car driver in general and, and felt coming into this year with a lot of confidence and knowing that I felt like we could compete with these guys and haven't had the year that we were hoping for. But uh, the past few weeks have been encouraging and felt like we've been running more like we did last fall, which is really nice and um, no reason why we can't do that more often. Two things jump out at me there. Chase is right. You don't luck your way into eight second place finishes. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is usually it's the young guy who's on the phone. Mm -hmm. Bill Elliott, NASCAR Hall of Famer, is sitting there on the phone <clears throat> while, while Chase is talking. Right, but you know why he's in there. He's trying to learn from the experienced road course ace, his son, Chase Elliott, mm. because Bill Elliott's a rookie. He's going to have to go to the rookie he meeting, has to go at, to the rookie uh, meeting. at uh, Road America He's going to be put in a car that he hasn't been in in over 10, 12 years, and he's going to be a rookie That's gonna be at fun. Road America. That'll be a lot of fun. So yeah. I think he was just trying to get, gather some data from his young son. <laughs> Don't forget now, you can pick up that race-winning die cast and all of the race-winning die cast at planbsales.com. Chase's career, first career win. There you go, the Sun Energy car. That'll be a collector's item after his first victory career-wise on the cup side, planbsales.com. You can pick them all up there. They got a huge collection. Check it out. That one will be a collector's item for sure as Chase uh, gets the victory. And as we look forward for for Chase now, uh, you mentioned the Chevrolets doing very well. It seems like they have started to find something. A good week a week ago, Chase wins. This week, you had what one, two, three, four more. Uh, four total top ten Chevys in the top ten at Watkins Glen, and I understand that's not you know your mile and a half or your short track or your super speedway or whatever, but uh, still, they seem to be more competitive, as you said. Well, we just came back from Pocono a week ago, and we saw Chase Elliott clearly 
have a very, very fast car, was out in front leading the field for a large portion of that race, able to come back to Watkins Glen, where it was a driver dominant, in other words, not really a car dominant place like Pocono, and next week's race at Michigan is a car dominant track. So a driver dominant, but now we've seen car dominant, driver dominant, and now we're going to go back to a car dominant track. I really see uh, good things on the horizon for those guys. Should be fun to watch as well. We'll continue to look at what happened at Watkins Glen. We had a cool race on the Xfinity side. They will be off uh, at, a, at the Mid-Ohio coming up this weekend. The trucks will head to Michigan. We'll talk about all that as well as we look forward to what's coming up this weekend. It's all on MRN Motorsports Monday. Stay right there. I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I want that honey to bloom. And it get in my feathers like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So cold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback steak tonight. Outback steak house. That's what it's all about. Outback steak Chris Crockett here with another member of our Toyota racing family. Reggie, you've taken tailgating to new places. You've converted this school bus into a giant brisket smoker? Yeah, it's table stakes, Chris. Oh, you see that? That's my lookout tower, so I can see Kyle Busch taking the lead. Wow, what's the cage for? That's for the tailgaters. Oh, yeah, that's a real alligator. NASCAR and Toyota Racing. With a family like this, who knows the places we'll go as things heat up this summer. Learn more at toyotaracing.com. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strengths. Chase Elliott, the race leader, but only by about a car length and a half. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. off of turn number five. Looks to driver's right. Now he hit Truex is off the pace on the straightaway into turn six. It is Chase Elliott all by himself at the front of the field in turn seven for the final time. All this time we've been wondering when would it happen. It's going to happen today at Watkins Glen in his 99th start. Chase Elliott is going to victory lane, scoring win 250 for Hendrick Motorsports. There you go, Chase Elliott in victory lane at Watkins Glen. That was Kyle Ricky and Joe Moore on the call for the Motor Racing Network. And it's always a lot of fun to see a guy get a first victory, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in on-track, off-track. But it's always interesting to me at a road course how much strategy comes into play and how much uh, – Incidents are magnified. You had Kyle Busch unable to get fuel in the car. He had to come back in, drove his way all the way back to third. Martin Truex Jr. runs out of fuel on the last lap. What about the fiasco with Denny Hamlin's final pit stop where uh, they ran over the hose for the air gun and it knocked the uh, guy in the head? I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, that was actually, uh, we were participating in that pit stop. Uh, we were parked right Not by. intentionally. Not intentionally, <laughs> no. We actually came in, we changed it. We were going to do strategy with a fuel only stop. We had to go around the 24 car. It kind of wedged us in behind the 11. We tried to turn out, and it became a humongous snafu. And I'm actually reading snafu on a sheet right here. And I there think it's go. funny when somebody actually types snafu. Um, but two things. Uh, Chase Elliott now adds his name to a, a small group of guys that have won in all three series. And we can mm -hmm. look that up later on. But the guys like Steve Park, uh, Brendan Gaunt, you know, there's guys that have won in all three series. And, and now Chase Elliott can add his name. And also... That's right. Kevin Harvick drove his way to a top drove 10. He almost came to pit road, speaking of that strategy yep. thing, when he thought there was going to be a caution at yep. the last minute, had to go back out onto the track and still was able to get a top 10 finish. So head by Outback Steakhouse, get your free Bloomin' Onion today. Little Joey will send you over there and uh, get your free Bloomin' Onion because another top 10 for Kevin Harvick. And uh, they got a great steak and lobster <clears throat> special going on right now. That sounds really good. You know, he has a hard fought effort. We were actually talking under, under that green flag. We were trying to get to pit road because we knew we had a sp spotters over in the chicane bus stop interloop okay and they were saying that caution is going to come out so you're trying to race around and get to pit road because you want to get to pit road while everybody else is on the track because then when the caution does come out 
you stay on the track, everybody else has to pit, and boom, you've passed all these cars. It mm -hmm. seems like you're a genius. We couldn't get to pit road. Kevin Harvick dove off and at the last minute had to pull back out onto the track. When the caution didn't, did, in fact, come did, out. It did yeah. come out. They had closed because the caution comes out, they closed pit road at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then if you come down pit road closed, then it's a penalty tail on the longest line. So that would have been a huge momentum change or track position change uh, for those guys. But it didn't work out. Uh, Strategies just magnified at road yeah, courses. Yeah, but realistically, the guys like Chase Elliott, Truex, Kyle Busch's, they strategy was fast cars go fast, man. Mm -hmm. We're going to do what we want to do and make you chase us. Yeah, and that's here we are. Come get us. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly how it worked for those guys. All right, let's talk a little on track, off track now, where we discuss some things going well in the sport and some things that maybe aren't going quite so well. On track for you, I think I know what this is going to be because you love when somebody goes to victory lane new. You know, so I've been in the business for about 22 years, been associated with a lot of first-time wins. We could talk about the Glen selling out again four years in a row. I believe yeah, that's talked cool. About. We could talk about the fantastic road course racing that Watkins Glen offers. It's a unique style of road course racing, and I'm going to have a little off track for that mentality. But Chase Elliott's first win, eight second-place finishes. Man, that's, those are heartbreaking because you're this close to getting your first victory. Mm -hmm. Now what you've seen is he knows he drove to victory lane on his own, ran out of gas coming. He, there was no saving gas there. Truex was pushing him hard. These guys are all over the place. Get everybody Jim, congratulating it's him. It, it's, it, because everybody knows and appreciates how much effort you have in a first <laughs> victory. We see Jimmy Johnson actually pushing his teammate back around. He was not able to do the celebratory burnout, which is unfortunate, but he'll have another victory to be able to do that. Drivers all over victory lane coming to see Chase Elliott's first victory. You always remember your first. Sun Energy is one of the first times they've been to Victory Lane, which is a random sponsor for those guys. Napa is able to celebrate with those guys. But, man, first victories, there's just nothing better. Yeah, Kyle Busch <laughs> shakes a little drink on him there yeah. as he climbs out of the car. But uh, that is so cool. And, you know, it leads to my on, on track for – uh, these guys you mentioned earlier, the Chevrolets are starting to get it a little bit better now and click a little bit better. Last week at Pocono, we had five of the top seven drivers under 26 years of age. And the talk has been, can anybody do anything with the big three? When are these young guys going to start making it happen? Well, mm -hmm. Chase Elliott won yesterday. Yep. Uh, you also had Eric Jones winning earlier this season. Ryan Blaney already has a win. Suarez, his second top five, uh, second straight top five. William Byron, his second straight top ten finish. You look at a guy like Chase Elliott, who's now fifth in the playoff standings. Uh, you look at Kyle Larson, 11th there. Ryan Blaney, 13th. Alex Bowman, uh, the last spot right now in the playoff standings. These young guys all are starting to make their moves and I think it's only as you mentioned going to magnify now and going to pick up some momentum as they they come to the realization that hey we can do this we can compete with these guys and I think it's great to see uh, not that there's anything wrong with the big three dominating because it's been we talked about it last week how long since we've seen something like that with three guys mm -hmm. dominating but now these other guys are showing we can win too you know it's interesting we have young kids and we put so much pressure on them when they come into the sport we have to win right away was a lot of other guys that have a lot more talent with a lot of good teams that they're going to be winning right away. We can't they're not going to just park. No, we yeah. can't have everybody winning all the time. And what we see is the big three drivers, very successful past cup champions, all three of them. They're good. Mm -hmm. But you get the Eric Joneses and the Daniel Swords and the William Byrons and the Ronnie Blaney's. They're going to be good, and they're getting better, mm -hmm. without a doubt. We see that trend with, and, and again, uh, Eric Jones sitting in the, in the playoff hunt right in the top ten. You know, we had five of the finishers yesterday all under 25 years of age. So these guys are good, they're gonna get better, but we have some really good elder statesmen in the field as well. All right, now off track, what is not going quite so well in the world of Joey? Well, what happens is we go to Watkins Glen, it puts on an amazing race, and everybody clamors the same thing. We need more road course races, more mm -hmm. road course races. We just have to be careful when we say this. We don't need more road course races, we need more road courses like Watkins Glen mm. because the racing that we see at the Glen is unparalleled. There's no other racetrack that we go to that puts on the show simply because there's not a place on the track you can't pass. Mm -hmm. From the start-finish line, we go all the way around a 72-second lap. You're passing or attempting to pass or preventing a guy from passing the entire way. There is no follow the leader. We're not just rooting and gouging these guys out of the way. You can pass into one. You can pass into the S's. You can pass top of the S's, down the back stretch, into the bus stop chicane interloop. Whichever, yeah. Off the carousel, into 7 and 10, whatever corner you want to call it. You can pass anywhere. It's just a really good racetrack. 
just be careful and cool the jets on we need more road course races because if we ask for more and we get them we may not like the be result. Be careful what you wish yes, for. Yes, we yeah. may not like the result when we're taking really good mile and a half tracks and we're converting them to, to rovals. Okay, we're going to be see, interesting to see how that works. We're going to see the experiment in October, and, and kudos to NASCAR for attempting it. But let's just calm down on the more road course racing action. Yeah, absolutely. I think we definitely, uh, it, it is the hot ticket right now in, in sports. And for me, I think one of the things to look at there is this was an enhanced weekend, so it was a condensed schedule. With the festival atmosphere you see at road courses, I wonder if the enhanced schedule, it works good for the teams, but for the fan track perspective, is there something more to be had by having that extra day and making it more of that festival-like experience? Because at Sonoma and at Watkins Glen, it's just cool to see all the campers and all the people just hanging out, not just an event you come for the day and you go. The interesting thing about the Glen, we're talking about the enhanced schedule, is a lot of people don't go there to watch the race. Why is that? Because you can't see the entire track. The right. fans, the, where the grandstands are, you see the majority of the racetrack. But as a campground, as an event, it's a fantastic facility to enjoy the weekend as a camp get around. And as you're sitting there by your camper doing whatever, there's like, Vroom! there's race cars going yeah, by. Well, there they so go. it's a really cool environment. So that's the thing that the, the Glen, as well as Sonoma, offers is an infield event that the racing goes on around you. And quickly, before we go to break, to your point about true road courses, we're going to see another one this weekend with the Xfinity guys as they head to uh, Mid-Ohio, or yep. rather, yeah, the, the Xfinity guys head to Mid-Ohio, mm -hmm. and then Road America a little bit later on. Those are awfully fun tracks. Yes, again, two tracks. The only, again, if we're complaining about Road America, an extremely long track, Mid-Ohio, those are really, really long tracks. But they're true road courses. But they are true road courses with plenty, plenty, plenty of passing zones. All right, we got a lot more to come here on MRN Motorsports Monday. We'll shift focus and begin to look toward Michigan a little bit. Plus, we got some Xfinity stuff to tell you about as well. Stick with us here on MRN Motorsports Monday. Are you a serious die-cast collector? Do you have a favorite driver? Are you looking for a gift for a race fan? No matter what the question, the answer is always PlanBSales.com. Plan B has all the latest in die-cast from Lionel and apparel, artwork, and other items for your favorite driver in NASCAR or other forms of racing. Go to PlanBSales.com, key your driver's name in the handy search window, and look at all the options. Your one stop for die-cast and other motorsports collectibles is PlanBSales.com. Grunt style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong, bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. We are Grunt style, and this we'll defend. Get yours at gruntstyle.com. I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I'm on that honey to bloom. And it get in my feathers like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So cold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback steak tonight. Outback Steakhouse. That's what it's all about. Outback Steakhouse. Your race leader, a red and black Mustang, snap-on tools emblazoned on the hood and on the side of the race car, and Joey Logano, the master right now, on the accelerator now, back down shifts, on the break into turn number seven, he's on his way to scoring the win here at Watkins Glen. Joey Logano's love affair with Watkins Glen continues for the third time in his last four Xfinity starts here, Joey Logano is headed to victory lane, he wins the Zippo 200 at Watkins Glen. Steve Post and Dave Moody with the call from Watkins Glen on Saturday as Joey Logano wins again. And boy, those uh, those Team Penske cars have been chewing them up and spitting them out uh, on the Xfinity side in, in terms of their success. Yeah, if you're watching the video online, you'll see Joey Logano cruised to an easy victory. What the video, However, did, what the video <laughs> didn't show you was the tooth and nail battle. Uh, of Brad Kozlowski and Joey Logano. Brad was on his bumper going into three, had a little bit of a wheel hop driving into one, got the car back around, was able to come back and salvage 10th place. But we were, the Brad Kozlowski car of the 12, we were coming. We had a good day, had a very fast race car, uh, got jumbled up on one of the restarts, lost one position into Joey, and then he was able to battle back. But it was going to be an amazing race. I was looking forward to that. Uh, uh, we don't spin out in turn one and 
you know, but it's a great race. Again, Xfinity Series, great racetrack with mm -hmm. uh, with that. I mean, Joey's done really, really well there at Team Penske. Brad's won a race there. Joey's won three now. So um, that treat, place does treat us good. Christopher Bell maintains the lead in the standings by 22 over Cole Custer. Uh, a top 10 finish for Bell at road courses, and we talked to him on NASCAR Live last week, and he said the main thing he was wanting to do is just not make mistakes. He missed a shift before. He's made other mistakes, and he wanted to have just a nice, smooth race. He did that, comes home ninth, maintains the lead in the standings. Cole Custer, Daniel Hemrick, Elliott Sadler, and Justin Allgaier rounding out the top five, then a, a pretty significant gap back to Brandon Jones. But A.J. Allmendinger drove back to the front in this race. Justin Allgaier, the top finishing uh, Xfinity regular with a third place run. And how about Ryan Priest? He just continues to perform no matter what they throw at him. Yep. So you had the uh, Ryan Priest over at Gibbs did a really good job. This was a wild card race for Christopher Bell. We look at Talladega sometimes as being a wild card race because you don't have any uh, way of forecasting what the deal is. And Christopher Bell said, I just want to get through this race without throwing away this point lead I had. Mm -hmm. And he did a really good job. Cole Custer came home six. Chris Rebell came home ninth. Just a couple of points there gained. Uh, and again, he has that 22 point lead uh, going off. We got a couple more races before we start working the playoffs. All right, here's what Joey Logano thought after his victory at Watkins Glen in the Xfinity Series. I drive the car they tell me to drive. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I, I think, um, I don't know, we wanted to switch and see what was going on. So we, we switched. <laughs> And uh, the thing is, I didn't really switch because Wilson was a crew chief last year when we won. So I was like, oh, all right, let's switch. We have the same team. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know. We just did. Um, but it was a good car. They both were good cars. They're both great teams. You know, the pit crew um, on both cars are cup teams uh, when we come to the uh, road course here with the pit stops backwards. So we do that for get some experience for our guys. But, you know, when it comes down to the end of it, it it's like the last few years, it just seems like it's the – two of us battling it out like crazy and I was working as hard as I can there. <laughs> so uh, it, was, it was a fun battle. These Xfinity cars are a really good package around this racetrack for uh, some racing because there's just enough draft to keep the leader from pulling away. That's something you don't hear a lot about at Sonoma, the draft, because it's such a significantly slower track, mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier. But the way those cars race, the Mustangs that, that Joey mentioned mm -hmm. there, the Camaros, uh, the Toyotas as well, a really good package in the Xfinity Series for these. Kyle Larson, as a matter of fact, said uh, it's just a whole different world going from Xfinity to Cup, especially at Watkins Glen. He said he felt like the car was better than the driver. At, uh, in the Xfinity race or the cup race? The, the, the cup race, he said he felt like the car was better than the driver. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of on-throttle control because you can't just mat the gas. You can get away with that a little bit more in the Xfinity series with the lack of horsepower to keep your tires under you. Very rarely do you hear an Xfinity guy complaining about drive off because the, the cars, you have enough momentum, the cars are accelerating at a, at a smoother pace. But the cup cars, you can easily overdrive your rear tires and they get tired really fast and you have to let them cool off. We experienced that at the end of the race. You're falling off a second, a second and a half a lap when you've gotten everything hot. You ride around and let it cool down and you can pick back up to a good pace and, and find that speed again. But it is a driver, again, we said it earlier in the show, it's a driver-controlled track versus a car-controlled track like we see at Michigan. The Xfinity Series now moves on to Mid-Ohio, and this is just a fun name, isn't it? The Rock and Roll Tequila 170 at Mid-Ohio. That's 2.30 on Saturday afternoon. Sam Hornish Jr., the defending winner there, and that's another true road course. It's, that's a place where it's like a park. The people just go and hang out. You see lawn chairs all over the property there. There are some grandstands, of course, but primarily people just go and find their little spot and hang out. Yeah, you go there for a weekend, a Saturday and Sunday event to enjoy the atmosphere of just having race cars around you you don't necessarily go there to watch a race like you would on a Saturday night local short track that place is simply you want to go there and hang out for the weekend and you look around you're like oh there's race cars around here mm -hmm. so it's, it is a beautiful facility since uh, the cup guys from team Penske will be at Michigan who's going to be in the Penske cars at mid-Ohio the best of my knowledge it should be Austin Cindric. Austin Cindric, okay mm -hmm. All right, that'll definitely be something to look forward to. Uh, let's talk a little bit of Truck Series action as we shift forward here in the last little bit of this segment. They are off this week. They head back to Michigan for action this coming week. Johnny Sauter continues to lead the standings there. Noah Gregson, Mr. Race, has already gotten clearance, a waiver from NASCAR, so he is still playoff eligible. So we come to Michigan and determine what? When we go to Michigan, that track, the series and the truck series is what the Xfinity and the Cup guys try to emulate mm. because it's just like a restrictor plate race. We see a lot of packs, a lot of drafting, a lot of sucking up, a lot of guys that can't get away from each hey, other. Maybe we should run that all-star package 
at Michigan yeah. and see yeah. you're not, not on board with that? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the truck series, we have a lot of high speeds. We're only asking, we wish we could get Michigan a little bit wider. Yeah. You know, the track still hasn't matured enough since we've repaved it, a, man, eight, five, six, seven years ago. And we'd like to get it wider. They're trying to run, guess what? The tires. Dragon. <laughs> so they're trying to drag it. They're trying to widen out, trying to get that. Are they going to start at the bottom? Uh, or are they? I, if they stay on the, if they get on the bottom, Somebody, uh, somebody needs to be written yes. up. Yeah. But the truck series at Michigan puts on one of the best races because it's a, it is a restrictor plate style. Those guys will simply run around wide open. The better handling trucks will tend to go to the front and stay there, but they can't get away from the rest of the pack. And there's so much about momentum in the truck series anyway that makes it uh, even more magnified there. One more break here on MRN Motorsports Monday. We'll look at the Cup Series as they head to Michigan next. The tire dragon. Arr! I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I want that honey to bloom. And it get in my feathers like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So cold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback steak tonight. Outback steak house. That's what it's all about. Outback steak Chris Crockett here with another member of our Toyota racing family. Reggie, you've taken tailgating to new places. You've converted this school bus into a giant brisket smoker? Yeah, it's table stakes, Chris. Oh, you see that? That's my lookout tower, so I can see Kyle Busch taking the lead. Wow, what's the gauge for? That's for the tailgaters. Oh, yeah, that's a real alligator. NASCAR and Toyota Racing. With a family like this, who knows the places we'll go as things heat up this summer. Learn more at toyotaracing.com. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. Things happen fast in racing, and if you don't know where to look, you can miss it all. With Legend from Racing Electronics, you'll never miss another moment. Legend gives you live fan vision video, in-car cameras, and stats at NASCAR and other Premier Series events. And the next generation race scanner for unfiltered driver and crew audio at any motorsports event nationwide. NASCAR fans have never been closer to the action. Welcome to the future of the fan experience. Learn more by visiting racingelectronics.com. I'm Kevin Harvick, and it's another Bloomin' Monday. Ask for your free Bloomin' Onion tonight at Outback Steakhouse. Now it's back to Woody Kane and Joey Meyer. Another top 10 finish for Kevin Harvick means a free Bloomin' Onion if you go by Outback Steakhouse on Monday. It is Bloomin' Monday. Mm. Uh, they've got a great steak and lobster special going on now as well. But let's look ahead to Michigan. You mentioned how well the Chevrolets have been doing, in particular Kyle Larson. That's a track that generally suits him. He is the defending winner uh, of, that, of that race at Michigan. So what can we expect this weekend? Don't be surprised if Chase Elliott wins two in a row. Really? Don't be surprised. Make a note of this. Joey's making a bold prediction right here. The guy, the Hendrick Motorsports oh. camp has really been moving forward. Now, we haven't seen it at all four cars running up front, but everybody's taking a step forward of where they've been. The William Byrons and the Alexes are moving forward. Jimmy Johnson is still a little off, but he's moved forward. Chase Elliott in the last two or three, four weeks has been really moving forward, obviously capturing it off with a victory at Watkins Glen. Strong, strong performance at Pocono from Chase Elliott. We're going to see the same kind of performance. If we don't, I'll be incredibly surprised, but because your aero package from a body standpoint is very similar to from Pocono at Michigan. Michigan tends to hold the cars in the track, but you really rely on a lot of aero. It's why when we go to Michigan, a lot of times NASCAR will take the cars from a Michigan race because that's our most dominant aero track that we utilize uh, for any all, all manufacturers. So we're going to see a good performance from those guys. Uh, I the speeds still, are something else there as well. Speeds are exactly how I still think the big three are obviously going to be contending with, uh, to contend with, and we're still looking to break through with some of the other guys. Like Brad, we're, we're still looking to get our first victory. Yeah, I mean, you got guys like Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, uh, Denny Hamlin, yep. uh, Eric Almarola has been close. A lot of those guys, Jimmy Johnson you mentioned, have been good yep. uh, in the past but have yet to break through with a victory this year. Yeah, if I'm playing fantasy sports, the two guys that I, I put on my league, and I don't do fantasy sports, but I know we talk about it a lot here, is the Chase Elliott's and the Eric Amarola's. We saw Chase break through. I think once you get your first win, the second one comes way easier. It's like a weight off your it's shoulders. That's exactly right. You know how to do it now. Okay, I got my first one. Uh, and your second one is the only time you can ever double your win total. 
Yeah, that's right? true. That's right. Yeah. But After we've that, the percentage just dropped. <laughs> exactly. yeah. But we've seen Eric Amarola have the speed. Now it's a matter about executing the entire race, and I think we're going to see that. So I see Eric getting a win before the end of the year, uh, working his way into the playoffs. Chase is going to work his way up. But I still see them random, the Denny Hamlins and the Brad Keselowski of the world, who've been right there, but they just can't pull the – pull the plug and get it to back to victory lane. That's definitely something to keep an eye on as we head to Michigan where the speeds are going to be way up. The, a lot of the guys like a Kyle Larson are going to run up and try and run that really high groove and make Love it to, make yeah. advantage of that if they can get the grip up there and if the tire dragon oh. goes up there and, and uh, gives them a little help because they'll work in the bottom groove during practice. Absolutely. Yeah, the bottom lane with the trucks, that's where they're going to run because they run around wide open to begin with. Uh, anything moving up the track is just going to make you go around the track further, so there's no advantage to a car that's running wide open. So you're going to run on the bottom. That's going to be rubbered up really well. The weather should be good right now. It looks really good for a good weekend. Definitely something we want to keep an eye on. The trucks uh, and the in the Cup Series head to Michigan. We'll have the Truck Series race for you on Saturday afternoon at 12.30. The Corrigan Oil 200 Camping World Truck Series race, 12.30 on Saturday afternoon. Bubba Wallace, the defending winner of that race. Then the Xfinity Series on Saturday as well. The Rock and Roll Tequila 170 That's at Mid-Ohio. That's, That's a party. 2.30. It That's just sounds party. like it doesn't. Then the Cup race on Sunday. The Consumer Energy 400, 1.30 on Sunday. I'm Woody. He's Joey. We'll see you next week.